All right, Rahul. Um, thank you so much for having me at the Rahul Mishra Atelex. Every time I've spoken to you in the past, we've always spoken about your, you know, the accolades, the international awards. The first time I ever spoke to you was back in 2014, I think, when yes. you won the Bulmark Prize. So I think you've really come a long, long way, isn't it? Yeah. So 2014 was, you know, starting of our international journey when I won the Bulmark Prize. Uh -huh at Milan Fashion Week. Right. So, yeah, when I look back, it looks like uh, that has happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that was the start of our international, you know, career. You know, but what is really um, beautiful is that your designs, your collection, every time is very, very Indianized. You know, it's got the Indian embroidery, it's got, you know, those loud, beautiful colors. And anyone can say that, you know, um, it's the very, very talented artisan or a weaver who's come with a very, very intelligent, creative mind and created this. But with time, this transition, I have to say, has been seamless that now the silhouettes are very bold, very modern. So um, your designs are loved, uh, you know, by people globally, yet they have the, the, the Indian aesthetics. I think that's a very beautiful balance. So tell me, what is the secret to that? And how have you sort of, you know, done this transition so seamlessly and yet you're, you know, very, very close to your aesthetics? I think whenever a new style evolves, whenever something new comes in the market, mm -hmm. it's, it's as if like you're starting a kind of new religion. There will be very small takers, a new brand, there will be a few people who appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And more you keep doing certain things right, more you keep working on it, you know, more people start appreciating it. And that that is where they, that kind of aesthetic becomes a flavor. Mm -hmm. So even in past, in 1990s, when you remember, if you remember late 90s, like McQueen. Yes. McQueen started a very distinct, very different aesthetics. Right. And they were, again, sometimes a bit gothic, British, or maybe extraterrestrial, whatever he could visualize, he started that. And, and the showmanship somehow became like, you know, epitome of how design was being defined. Right. And how you look at, you know, some gold standards or benchmarks mm -hmm. in that way. So in the same way, I really feel like coming from India, when you are telling story about India, mm when you are showcasing processor from India, when you're showcasing, you know, talent of India in terms of your craftsmen, in terms of uh, most amazing embroiderers what the country has. Right. I think, you know, that is the best way. You don't have to try too hard to be like, like the way West is, the way West ex expect you to be like. Correct. It is better to showcase something what you are. And, and and this this a bit of shock, a bit of surprise mm -hmm. when you are showcasing something which is beyond their expectations, beyond their their imagination, is much better for a brand. And that's how that's how I think any brand can establish a very strong narrative and right. very very strong design language in the global fashion. Mm -hmm. It's it, it it is all about uniqueness. It is all about creating a fine balance between your craft, your culture, mm -hmm. and at the same time creating something which is universal, shapes which are universal. Right. And you know, modern is something which I really feel is all about nowness, like mm -hmm. what is now? If you are too ahead in future, you will not be accepted. Mm -hmm. If you are too much lost in past or your previous work, right. uh, you know, tend to get repetitive and that might be very boring. Yes. So. As a designer, creating something for now, for today, is, is always beautiful and challenging. But you know, uh, that brings me to my next question. You said that, you know, it's very important to live in the present and, uh, you know, not really be repetitive. But then when it comes to uh, a seasoned designer like yourself, then it is important to somewhere, you know, have that style that, you know, uh, speaks for itself, that this is a Rahul Mishra masterpiece. So somewhere, don't you think it, it is important to stick to your, you know, to your style, your authentic style? And how challenging is it to, you know, come up with something new, collection after collection? Because, of course, as you said, everyone wants something new. But, um, but you're still very close to, you know, the label, the, the aesthetics of the label. So how challenging is that? And how do you manage to bring something new every time? I think there's a, there's a fine difference okay. 
between following certain style or creating a style of your own on being repetitive right there's a very very fine difference often people confuse they really feel if i'm repetitive if i'm doing the similar pieces again and again that's my style right or if i'm using the same technique again and again that's my style yes. because ultimately you know as a creative guy whenever you're doing some new show mm -hmm. there always butterfly there's always a challenge if people are going to appreciate it or they're going to like it or or if i'm if i experiment too much i may not able to deliver the way i have delivered in last collection mm -hmm. so often designers stay with this dilemma and a lot of time when you say your own style becomes the biggest excuse to repeat yourself yeah yeah and it's also like a like a safety net because you know anything which you keep doing again and again you tend to become good at it right so i think i think that is what limits creativity also at the same time right, right. a lot of time designers if they they themselves uh, you know uh, mix their designs from season to season correct. how do you identify which is new which is old correct correct so in that way i really feel uh, as a designer as a creative artist you should be taking risk all the time because it's happened uh, something which is happening in a studio your own team is working on it your own processes are taking care of product mm -hmm. the style is going to be there right even if you try something completely new mm -hmm. there will be something which will reflect off that it comes from this yeah. brand yeah so a lot of time do not shy away from experiment and do not shy away i, I really always tell myself mm -hmm. and i need to experiment mm. i need to do something new which i have not done mm -hmm. other for life is so boring you know uh, i'm not challenging my own imagination and we are not challenging you know excellence where a craft people can reach right and maybe you might say you know just a simple thing like a flower or a water mm -hmm. has has appeared in last 8 10 collection but every season we try to find a new way of creating water mm -hmm. a new meaning behind water right so this is what is what is really really beautiful and really challenging what makes a rahul mishra piece um, a forever a classic piece because if somebody somebody is you know investing in you know in a in a in a in a nice state of the art sort of a masterpiece they obviously want to wear it maybe 10 years down the line or they want to have it in their closet forever so um Do you keep future in mind when you design clothes? I really feel like something when our intent is like we try to create very universal motifs for example mm -hmm. we do not go with pop culture or a fad and all that idea. Yeah. We always look at you know classic colors, we always look at things which are looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's as simple as that. If like sunflower is beautiful today, mm -hmm. it was beautiful 500 years back. Mm -hmm. it is going to remain beautiful 5000 years later mm -hmm. so that's how when whenever you look at design you have to create things which are which are beautiful which are pleasing mm -hmm. which are not necessarily like you know because a lot of times when you design something based on you know what is happening this year or what is happening today in market and you borrow a lot of inspiration, uh, inspiration from the events or from the from the people from the pop culture you often create something which might be very very displeasing or very very unpleasing mm -hmm. uh, for a wearer 10 years down the line 5 Correct. years down the line Correct. but here when we're looking at classic pieces we are not following fashion right. we are creating something which is universal mm -hmm. which is extremely beautiful extremely delicate at the same and time a piece. and something where where workmanship is really beautiful because in that way this piece is going to create far more value 50 years down the line because i am very sure about it or even 20 years down the line the level of embroidery which are doing today mm -hmm. or may we may able to do in next 5 years of time it will be hard to believe 50 years down the line that people could do this kind of work also amazing so what we are creating right now with the power of hand we are creating some of the you know it's not credit is lost to me mm -hmm. the credit is to to the to the you know hundreds of craftsmen who are creating those pieces mm -hmm. these hundreds of craftsmen or i would say more than 1000 people mm -hmm. who are working on creating these hand embroidery they are creating some of the masterpieces which future generations will find hard to believe that it was done by hand wow i'm super excited to actually go through those pieces and 
just grab one for myself very soon now but uh, before that um, you know you are an inspiration to many budding designers you know you come from a small place i think close to kanpur yeah and uh, now you're globally recognized you're so popular across the globe you know people across the globe are wearing your clothes so um is there any message that you want to give out to budding designers and how do you see the future of uh, indian design you know for me uh, when i look at uh, when i look at indian fashion when i look at uh, global fashion for me the boundary the divide is blurring every day uh, in today's times you know with looking at fast fashion being everywhere similar kind of brands are available everywhere correct so in that way like indian craftsmanship indian beauty indian indian uh, culture food everything gives a new meaning to life mm. it's almost like a new found romance mm-hmm. so in that way i am sure like indian craftsmanship indian indian uh, you know embroideries people were very much aware about yeah top brands like from dior to chanel everybody takes embroideries from india mm-hmm. from gucci to everybody mm-hmm. so indian embroideries are are accessed by everybody right. in different forms through indian labels or maybe through global labels So in that way I think I think this time if I had to tell myself you know when I was 10 year earlier uh, before winning Bulma prize just keep believing in your craft keep believing in your your indianness and at the same time try to find a unique voice within yeah, india yeah, yeah. and as that, well as for the for, for the world and do something the market is becoming too cluttered right now do you think that you know everyone has something to say and uh, the, yet there's no uniqueness you know everything is available everywhere there is scope for everyone which is amazing but somewhere you think the the market is getting very cluttered i think i think you know people are also a lot of young designers are trying to find a very quick way hmm it takes a lot of time yeah to reach at at any stage sure any goal which you have. one has to look at long term goal long term strategy and that should be backed up with your with your with your craftsmanship with your with your you know hard work etc you know you have to be yourself yeah everybody else is taken true so as an idea you have to be yourself when you try to be like you know and everybody has their own own way their their own thought journey. process their own journey and early you discover much better it is for you otherwise you know if you are if your designs look like somebody else mm-hmm. you might able to sell it mm-hmm. but you know ultimately it is not going to give you mm, you know happiness right it is not going to give you that, that satisfaction that, and that contentment and also it will not give you the something called success right. because you know in that way i think you being a designer versus somebody selling the same copy of lehenga and chandni chowk what is the difference maybe just a different surprise true so in that way people need to need to realize like what this world wants is real you not you being like somebody else true very true Now, because you create luxury, what is luxury for you, Rahul? And how much do you indulge in luxury yourself? So, for me, you know, luxury is not defined by by price tag. Yes, luxury can be defined by one factor, which I say is time. Okay. And time is like for me, what we create, we have a measure like how much time does it take to create that piece. so for the for the 5 meters organza which goes in creating probably one lenga or one outfit if it takes like you know 3000 human hours of work for me that is luxury of of like employing and participating making participation happen for for hundreds of artisan and create something which is which is really really beautiful and at the same time when it is displayed on a shelf when somebody takes it then also it's a measure of time how long will that outfit retain true you know attention and love of the wearer or the person who bought it that is a true luxury and luxury can be found even in a simple example like for example if i give you it's not a little price tag mm-hmm. a person who buys probably a super expensive sports car yeah 
you, he already had 50 other cars. Maybe he drives once, that's not luxury. On the other hand, somebody who has got one bicycle, who is cleaning it every day, a child gets bicycle and he keeps it throughout the time. Yeah. He cherishes it, he values it, he dreams about it. Yeah. And that person kind of, you know, cleans it every day, makes sure like it's like shining, shining and it's clean. Yeah. That is true luxury. So something that basically gives you happiness is luxury. And I completely agree with you. I feel that, you know, with time, the, the, the definition of luxury is, is changing and it's very sad because luxury now is becoming more of showing off. It's for other people where I think luxury is something which is a very, very personal experience, something that you enjoy for yourself. Yes. It's not something that's, you know, in the closet and you've forgotten about it because it's last season, but you fall in love with it again and again because it's a masterpiece. You love it, you bought it for yourself. So it doesn't outgrow in terms of mood, but it grows on you. You know, luxury can be measured very easily. As I said, time and love. Hmm. More time you give to make it, more love you shower on it yeah. in making it yeah. and more time and love it retains of the person who owns it. Right. But you know, as you just said, you know, it, it should take a lot of time and, and I think it's directly uh, connected to good quality. So basically good quality and a lot of time given to creating something is something that goes hand in hand. But I think somewhere it's losing its charm now because um, Everything is machine made, factory made now and you can't really, te it, uh, earlier it was craftsmanship, you know, a lot of time was given to each and everything. So somewhere I feel, you know, it's losing its charm but yet there are few labels and few people who are trying to retain it. I think you are definitely one of them. Um, congratulations for the global success, I think as an Indian and as a fashion enthusiast, it makes me very, very proud. Thank you. Thank you so much for this amazing tete tet Rahul. So Rahul, uh, as much as I've known you, I think for the past 10 years, every time I've spoken to you, you're a very, very simple person, very calm, always at the hills, always creating something, very family oriented, yet there is a lot of frenzy around you, international travel and shows and glamour and celebrities. So now that part of your life, how do you sort of balance that? It's simple, you know, we don't have to try to balance anything unnecessarily, you have to just give time to everybody everything whatever time it needs to be given mm -hmm. so just today when i was leaving house and from here i will drive to hills so these are my travel clothes <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, my daughter was saying she's seven year old why are you leaving on the weekend i was telling Deva, shall i go on monday she said no monday is working <laughs> so, so, so you have to go on a weekend <laughs> you have to do something so so idea is like uh, even in Paris, like uh, on 23rd of the show, we arrived on 19th and um, we traveled back on 25th. Yeah. So idea is like, whatever, you have to optimize the time so that you can have more time, more lazy Sundays, more relaxing time with family. Mm. And especially um, if you have, um, a, you know, young child, it is very, very important to, uh, to you know, set your priorities right. So in that way, I know there are like, there are like a lot of things which are in backlog, a lot of interviews which I have to also respond and reply to. Uh, but I really feel apart from glamour and all that, if you can balance everything really correctly and with glamour also because you know, when we are part of it, you know, done 20 odd shows internationally, have done like, you know, 10, 15 shows in India. So it's just work. I, I think, I think glamour is more for outside world. Yeah. For us who is working at backstage, trying to look at every detail, uh, you know, like a tailor, like a, like a, like an embroiderer. So all the glamour part goes out of the window. You are you are more like concentrated on your work. Yes. For me, you know, going to Paris or this season, last season was a lot of work yeah. where, where, where we all were, entire team was working day and night, mm. trying to put together a show. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, people might say it's a seven minutes of great amount of glamour, mm. but for us, it was seven days of hard work. Correct. So that glamour was just for seven minutes. But yeah, <laughs> I totally understand that. 
Okay, so besides uh, creating uh, clothes and wonderful clothes, what else do you like doing? Actually, I, I'm a keen student of our of architecture. Okay. Architecture in terms of like looking at how vernacular architecture is. Okay. How how sustainability and and how we live mm -hmm. is kind of interconnected. Looking at new advancement of technology, you know. So and and also like looking at how like clothes houses can also create a lot more employability for the for the local community, local people. Mm -hmm. So in that way, that is one one of the reasons also why I'm off to Hill right now because okay. we are constructing uh, a beautiful you know house over there oh. in hills, and we are using modern technology along with local craftsmanship, old idea of how the houses are built, you know recycling a lot of existing materials over there, and also create. A house which is passive, not active. Mm -hmm. Like just to tell you what is passive, what is active house. Uh, active house is any house. Like most of the houses are active because they are almost like living being. They need water. Mm -hmm. They need energy, like electricity. They need heat and cooling, or they need. Then they excrete garbage. Okay. Waste. Okay. And and uh, waste water is excreted uh, out of the house. So they consume and they pollute okay so most of the houses so in hills what we are creating is a passive house which takes care of its own energy requirement oh, wow and which takes care of its own garbage disposal at okay. the site okay uh, every part of disposal and that somehow you know collects all the water through rains mm -hmm. what the water that house has to use mm -hmm. so um, that is where like a lot of times uh, I'm a science graduate, so a lot of time, you know, scientist meets designer inside me. I think it's a deadly combination. Because <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you look at all the aspects and yet it, you create something so beautiful. And I'm, uh, and I'm sorry to call myself scientist because I really feel I'm a science graduate, <laughs> not a scientist. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, science is again a, like design. I really feel like everybody is a designer. Huh. And anybody who can question and create answers and, try, and, and find logic. answers uh -huh. and put logic to it yeah, is yeah. a scientist. So in that way... Yeah. In that way, I'm loosely using. But big, I think it's a beautiful uh, big words like looking at yeah, it yeah. because uh, you know science is basically logic and putting logic to creativity. I think is is a wonderful combination. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I just realized while speaking to you. But anyway, Rahul, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm extremely proud of uh, Rahul Mishra label as an Indian and as a fashion enthusiast. It really makes me very proud. Okay. Uh, I hope you keep continue doing the amazing work that you're doing. All the very best. Thank you for having me here at the Rahul Mishra Atelier. It was a wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to see you here.